All right. As soon as you tweet it out, I'll retweet it. Yeah, we're live now. We are? Yeah. Oh. Well, isn't that lovely? It's uh, justin.tv slash Justin Robert Young, correct? I believe so. And then... If you just tilt it down, it should be fine. <laughs> the new doctor announced the ad dragon. Thanks for the love, y'all. Um, I'm going to tweeter twatter this. Scoot up a little closer to the table if you can. Need that guy? Yeah, because it's just we can't have it that okay. far out. Check, check, check. All right. Well. All right. Zippity doo da. Zippity a. All right. I'm going to go ahead and tweet it. Are we good to tweet it? Yeah. And tweeting. Tweeting now. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> uh, and I'm pulling the comments up. Yeah, so I got the comments here. All right. Oh, and I closed out of it like a moron. All right. Yeah. Wait, can you guys hear? Is that good? Tell me you can hear me. Yeah, hopefully uh, we can adjust stuff here also. So uh, I'm going to talk about this volume. Ashley, you can talk. I'm going to talk about this volume. I don't want this thing to... This will fall off. If, will it? Yeah, actually, hold on. Let me just... Burp. This table's too big. I could always... Put it on something behind that, couldn't I? Yeah, I mean, that might just be a solution for... Another day? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, they can uh, see uh, the awesome painting, so that's good. Though. They can see the awesome... Who is it, Van Gogh, right? I think, I think so. I'm pretty sure it's a Van Gogh. That was the... Uh, uh, uh. There. That's probably good enough. I'll just sit in just, nice yeah, and close. I'll scoot in, belly on up. All right. Um, well, let me know when you want to start recording, and we'll just go into it. So, yeah, let me start a recording over here. Oi! That's racist. Oh, my God. Doctor. Check. Check, check. All right. Uh, so, guys, this is going to be us talking about Doctor Who. Uh, specifically the new Doctor and uh, the special that went along with it, the half-hour global special. Uh, it's for Who's the Boss? Who's the Boss? Um, the podcast know. where we talk about what's new and who, and boy, oh boy. And and to be honest, I think it's one of those things where uh, I think we're probably 
more likely to do it now that we have kind of a a little semi permit. We made a little investment, and by we, I mean Ashley. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a we because we live together and have like metaphorically shared finances. <laughs> um, Are you, is your thing falling apart? No, it's fine. Okay. Keep going. Oh, all right. I wasn't sure. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so we made a little investment. So now that I have an actual mic and not a crappy headset mic that crapped out the last couple of episodes of Who's the Boss, hopefully we will be making these on more of a regular basis. Um, as well as talking about... In general, you know? Yeah. So that'll be fun. More paragerbs. Paragerbs. That Harry, sounds dirty. Harry paragerbs. I like jury more. Jury, house jury more? House jury more. Uh... Yeah. All right. Uh, so, are you ready to record? Yeah. Do you do you want me to go into it like normal? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, let's make sure that we get the product way up front. <laughs> there we go. A little product placement. All right. Let's do this. Uh, actually, let me hold on. Oh top, God. top her off real quick forever then give me more too what do you do with see we're actually sailor? we're not actually having a podcast today sailor? sorry guys we're just gonna sit here and bullshit i'll tell you what i think if, if you were to say to everybody watching us right now uh that literally this was just going to be periodically we were going to drink ruin them and talk to each other people might be into that podcast yeah the problem with that podcast is that <laughs> us talking drunk would be it would get really personal and really embarrassing. It would stop really being fast. funny really fast. Like it would go immediately it from would get like real. haha to no. Why did you do that? No, no really. I, no, that would not happen. Okay, ninety percent of our interactions are us being complete silly. You know, it would just be it would be embarrassing for the, we oh. talk to each other in a language that is embarrassing for other people. Yes. Um, that being said. This episode of Who's the Boss is brought to you by Ruinum. Yes. <laughs> Get your own bottle at Ruinum.com. All right. All right. Hold on, wait. Let me tweet this out. All right. Tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. Oh. All right. I retweeted your tweet. You, oh, thank you. There's a bird on it. Doctor. Oh. Uh, all right. Are you ready? Oh, hold on. Let me get him off my back. Oh, yeah, you're mad. All right. Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Who's the Boss, the podcast where we talk about what's new in Doctor Who. I'm Ashley Paramore, joined by me, joined with me always. I can't even talk. It's been too long. I Justin know. Robert Young. Hi. And the occasional chirp in the background of the Doctor Bird, robbed of his chance at stardom. Yeah. Uh, we have a new Doctor. I mean, that's why we're doing the podcast. We normally do them after episodes. Uh, we are doing this because... Joy to the world, he is risen, uh, the the successor to Matt Smith. So where do we want to start with this? I'm not really sure. He's he's older than I thought he was going to be. I thought they were going to slate another young guy. Okay. I mean, well, it's, it's well, nice to know... let's, All right, here. For anybody who is listening to this that does not know oh. that it's Spoiler Peter Capaldi. Alert. Peter Capaldi is the new doctor. If uh, you do not know who Peter Capaldi is, uh, congratulations, you're not British. If you are not British, then uh, I highly recommend that you check out... He's, he's a character actor. There's a good chance that you've probably seen him in stuff before because he definitely gets uh, a ton of work and he has a very recognizable demeanor. But he is most known for a, uh, a British series called The Thick of It and then a movie spinoff called In the Loop that was really... In fact, if you've seen the HBO series Veep, that is by the same guy who did In the Loop, the same creative team that did In the Loop. This is this is their take on American politics, where Peter Capaldi was kind of the big guy in the British version. And I think I've actually heard you talk about that show before because you're a big political buff. I like politics and I like cursing, and so I very much enjoyed uh, the thick of it. And uh, I have not seen In the Loop, but I love Veep. You know, it, it's it that is a great series. He's extraordinarily foul mouthed and. Uh, aggressive in, in in that particular role for which he became iconic and now he steps into the role as uh, as Doctor Who it's exciting it's really really exciting I'm just kind of glad to 
get a new face. I'm sure I'm going to go through the face to when he first comes on the first few episodes. I'll be like, God, he's so terrible and fall in love in the end. But, well, I mean, it's... But but did, I, I got the sense, and again, it's hard to say everybody thinks like this because we are in our own Twitter bubbles. But I got the sense, at least from my own colloquial experience, that people were more ready for this transition compared to the tenant to Matt Smith transition. I agree. That that people did not want it's funny because they they played right leading right up to the announcement the final tenant episode the introduction of Matt Smith and uh you know you have that moment right before tenant transforms where he says I don't want to go and that I felt was such a moment you know where it's Tenant and the fans and the character kind of all on this one note that nobody wanted Tenant to leave and yet Tenant was leaving. Matt Smith, it's not like anybody doesn't like Matt Smith. It's just maybe this brings a little bit new, uh, of new blood creatively. Hopefully, to the show. a little I think more. People are ready, ready for that. I, I'm hoping that his character is going to be a little bit more serious. Yeah. Um, because as much as I love Matt Smith and the bubbly, and like we've talked about time and time again, the answer is because there is love in the universe. Ah, love. Love will save us all. Ah, oh, the snowmen were about to eat all of London, if not for the tears of an orphan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that kind of got a little, uh, a little cheesy. Now, we'll get into Capaldi and... And kind of what he can bring to the series in a second. But I do want to stop on the presentation of the new Doctor. When they announced uh, Oswin, uh, which was before uh, the most recent season. Not even just the ones that uh, she would be a part of. There was a press release. They had some photos. You know, They had her in front of the TARDIS. Uh, but it wasn't a special. This was a half hour special that was 27 minutes of filler. Right? And then, oh, hi, Peter. Yeah, and then it was it was Peter Capaldi. Now, if I... Let me ask you this. If the special was just a half hour taped interview with Stephen Moffat talking about where he was in terms of the creative decision making when Tennant was doctor why he chose Matt Smith as the doctor who he considered around there without even naming names just sort of talking about what he was looking for in a doctor what the experience was like in this would anybody have been upset I feel like that would have been a better I mean, 15 I... minutes of Matt Smith 15 minutes of of Stephen Moffat or, or 10 minutes of Stephen Moffat and then you bring out Capaldi and you have Capaldi talk for 10 minutes. I know we had talked about this a little bit. I would have much, much rather had an interview set up only because they were bringing up and I'm sorry, guys, like I haven't followed as much of the old school who or any of that. But aside from like the the one doctor, why am I blanking on his name? I'm going to yell at for this. The fifth yeah. doctor um, being up there who I recognized, I didn't know who any of the other people were. Well, okay. And, like, and, T- T- and it would been... in the chat room is saying uh, it was their way to bring out as many people from Doctor Who's past for the 50th anniversary. And certainly there was a, a plethora of them in that last final montage where they were talking about the Doctor, which is like a five minute montage. But other than that, I mean, you gave big lead time to British actors and comedians that uh, I don't know who they are. They didn't yeah. even have like this person from this thing, like presenter, actor, comedian, they didn't really have any kind of tags on those. I had no idea who they were and, and why I cared about their opinion when it came to Doctor Who. Now, as a BBC broadcast, I'm sure that made a lot more sense. As a BBC America broadcast, I don't know how <laughs> much sense it made. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. But that actually kind of brings me to, um, like, so yes. Having an interview would have been fantastic. And to know why Moffat chose who he did, which when Moffat covered that very briefly in that video clip right before the reveal, well, you know he, what I'm talking about. He covered one thing. One thing very that specifically. really get, irritated get, get me. Your, get your yayas out on this. What, what pissed <sighs> you off? So first and foremost, let me say I am very stoked to have Peter Cadaldi. Capaldi. Uh, Capaldi. Damn it. Don't worry. Come on. We got, we got a little Capaldi. while. 
You can get I'm used Liz to it. Dexic. Um, I'm stoked. I I'm happy to see the change. Hoping it goes in a darker direction. You know, whatever. The one thing that did upset me, though, is Moffat was mentioning Helen Mirren, who had suggested in the past the idea of having a lady doctor. Like, she thinks it's time for a lady doctor. And uh, Moffat said, he was like, oh, yes, I think, you know, it's it's in the canon, basically. It, it could totally happen. But, uh, you know, I also think it's about the time we had a, a the queen was a man, were a man or something. Yeah, the, the queen was and played by a man. I, okay. He doesn't want to slay a lady doctor. That's okay. Well, all right, hold on. Yeah, well, well, well all right. Let's let's drill down on that a little bit okay. because he makes in that one line. Obviously, we have that. That's a very rich line to take from because now at the end of this process, where he wants to play earlier, you know, in in the in the discussion element, uh, where where it was just oh, it was a new doctor. Who's it going to be? He wants to make that mystery box as big as possible. So. Gay, black, woman, transgendered, giraffe, doctor, <laughs> you know, like anything could be in play because he wants to throw people off the scent as much as possible. But we get that little hint of where he's coming from in terms of that discussion. Should the doctor be a woman? And from what I heard is that as long as Stephen Moffat is running the series and who knows whether or not that will lead past the regeneration after Capaldi... But I don't think we're ever going to get anything but a white male doctor when Stephen Moffat is there because he believes that the doctor is a white male character. That's what I got from from and, that. And quite frankly, the way that he writes his women, I would hope that, you know, he would not be the one to write a lady doctor. But No, but but that is not to say that he's insensitive. I mean he, oh, he, no. has, he has gone out of his way to the detriment of his writing, in my opinion, and I think we've agreed on a lot of this. To put in empowered, strong, not damsel in distress women to work in uh, gay characters uh, and and racial characters beyond what we would conceive of, you know, the the baseline of how to work them into a science fiction story. He's done this consistently, almost too much, in my opinion. You know, uh, just I think it, it at times has become a creative crutch for him. But for the doctor, it seems like he is a straight lace. The doctor's a white guy. And and that's fine. Uh, the bigger issue for me in, in all that is that he decided to take a jab at someone random in that for the sake of taking a jab, like at Helen Mirren. To specifically bring up her and I be mean, like, and knows? I wish the queen were a dude. Who knows They're... if that is like, if they're friends and that's like some dinner party line that he's All like right. thrown at her and he just wanted to put it out there. Uh, R Sharp in the chat room says that uh, the BBC special was not meant to be watched by those outside of Britain, which is news to people who broadcast it around the world you know i mean i think it was it was it was like deliberately BBC america it was deliberately put out around the world at the same time so i think it was supposed to be a worldwide broadcast i don't think that was sprung at the last minute that you know oh wait hold on people in australia and america are going to be watching this um <laughs> what there are more people in america that watch dr who than britain no i don't think that's true really no you don't think so uh -uh. you'd be curious though i know that more people watched the Fox special with McGann as the doctor, who, by the way, got like the most cursory of uh, of, of Wikipedia footnote mentions during that montage. It was like, had one person say, I thought he was cute. Anyway, on to, the, on to Eccleston. <laughs> um, the Fox doctor, man, McGann, always gets short shrifted. Always gets short shrifted. Mm. Uh, have you ever watched that? No, I haven't. We got to watch that one of these days. Okay. Maybe we can do a live, like a live commentary Reaction. track on that. We'll do like our own like mystery science theater hour on, on the McGann Fox reaction doctor. video. Yeah. McGann <laughs> reaction. Um, it's got, uh, uh, oh man, Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts as the master, Julia Roberts' brother, who's awesome and amazing. Uh, oh my gosh. It's, it's pretty cheesy, but it's actually decent. I don't know. I dug it. Uh, I mean, I didn't find it to be a real, like, stick in the eye. But I, I do think that it's one of those things that I think we can put to rest 
as long as Moffat's running it, that we're ever going to see anything but a white male doctor. Yeah. All right. Could have been a little more tactful the way you did it. That's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah, I mean, do we know if he's friends with Helen Mirren? Maybe he's friends with Helen Mirren. Someone tell us if he's friends with Helen Mirren. If you know Moffat and Helen Mirren, please exactly. tell us if, if you're they're a friends. mutual friend of both Stephen <laughs> Moffat and Helen Mirren, can you please let us know if they're frenzies in real life? Uh, all right. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about Capaldi. Capaldi. What is your what is your first reaction? I mean, no more than like I'm just I just have hopes that he's going to be a much more serious character. Um, I'm glad that, you know, people recognize that, or the BBC recognizes that people can still act after 50. So that's nice that they <laughs> casted somebody oh, that wasn't... Oh, I mean, wasn't... come on. They give the same dudes work all the time, the BBC. But oh I my mean... gosh, like, frickin' Tenet right now? Isn't he on, like, two different other shows? We were talking about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's definitely on, what is it, Blackshore? Blackshore and, like, something Abbey? No, he's not. No, no, no. In in the in, in the commercial, they're like it's the biggest drama since Downton Abbey. Okay, I thought he was in another show though, or a war show. I don't know. I, he's on more than one show on the BBC. I put money. He might have been in like a special or something like that. No, like right after Doctor Who, he got picked up for another series. I just can't remember what it was. He tried to do a couple American pilots. Yeah. I know that he Which wanted to. The, the the tenant playbook was to basically do the hor- the Hugh Laurie route. Where you have like an established British personality that comes to America and like they're just enough of a magnetic personality that they can do a serial show like House or an episodic show like House. Mm-hmm. And so he did, I think, a lawyer pilot and then and then something else. Uh, where it was, oh, maybe that's what I was thinking then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. now he's back on the I'm, BBC I'm full doing of crap BBC then. stuff. But he was out in L.A., much like Matt Smith, uh, trying to get Hollywood work. Broad church, that's what we're looking at. Not black shore. Blackshore sounds like a urban men's interest magazine. What? Blackshore. Oh, Blackshore magazine. Weird. Okay. All right. That's enough. Stop. Can you stop that? Go home. Okay. Uh, go home, Drew. You're drunk. You're drunk. Uh, all right. Capaldi, here is my take on it. He is, in the rebooted version of this series, the most intense doctor I think we'll ever see. Regardless of the writing, there are natural things that just pop for many of these actors. Eccleston was brooding. Tennant was charming. Uh, Matt Smith was goofy and and childlike. Capaldi, if they write him as the nicest guy in the world, he's always going to have that undercurrent of intensity. Uh, uh, Chimera96 says, if he doesn't swear like uh, the thick of it or the loop, I'm rage quitting. (laughs) He will not swear like in those uh, particular projects. But I do think that naturally he just has this kind of look in his eyes where we're we're going to see a fundamentally different reaction between like him and and Oswin, for example, that we saw since Billy Piper, all the, you know, pretty much except for Donna, all of the uh, characters, all the all the companions were in some level of oh my God, the doctor, I'm in love with the doctor. I want, you know, to be with the doctor. And then obviously those those storylines kind of each took their own fork in the road. I don't think we're going to see that this time. And I'm kind of really excited that we might be able to have a dynamic that isn't just, will the doctor love me, uh, you know, over and over and over again, both with Oswin as well as whoever comes after Oswin. Yeah, I mean, I I'm excited nonetheless. I'm just excited to see a new face. I I uh little little side tangent here. Wouldn't wouldn't he technically be the 14th or 13th, 13th doctor? Depending on what happens in the 50th anniversary, obviously. Because he keeps getting called the 13th, but then there's the John Hurt element, no, which the, we haven't no, talked about either. He's the 12th and then Sorry. Yeah. Math We'll see if whatever that, but also we don't know whether or not the John Hurt character is actually a doctor, doctor or if not, that's some, uh, you know, red herring on some level. Can I give you a prediction? Yes, you can, Justin Robert Young. They announced Oswin as the new companion, knowing that she, her first episode was going as companion was going to be the Christmas episode, but they announced her in the summer. 
uh, in, in late summer before the first episode of the season. The first episode of the season featured who? Oswin. We have the 50th anniversary and then the Christmas special where, where we will see Peter Capaldi, you know, uh, Matt Smith will, you know, shuffle loose his Gallifrey and coil and uh, Capaldi will, you know, in, in the traditional two second cameo at the end of the episode become the doctor. But in a 50th anniversary special where we are already seeing more than one doctor on the screen, would you be shocked to see a cameo from Peter Capaldi as the doctor before we see him regenerate as the doctor in the Christmas special? That would be interesting. Because why announce it now? Why not keep the... Well, uh, well, I mean, his name has been thrown around online before this announcement. To be so fair, could yeah, it be... They, 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 had, they had to suspend betting on it because the action was coming in so heavy on Capaldi in, in the, the later hours last night. So the rumors were that he had it at the end of last night. Uh, but that's because they had a television special, you know? That's because they announced on Friday that they were going to have a half-hour live transcontinental television special to announce who the doctor was. If they don't announce that and they just keep it a secret, why can't they keep that a secret until after the 50th anniversary and then they say, hey, congratulations, Peter Capaldi's the doctor. I'm just saying. They did this the last time with Oswin where it was like, oh, wow, this is kind of early that they're announcing the companion. And then, boom, we see her show up in the next episode that aired. So, you know, we'll see. I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see what they do with it and I will probably hate him the first 2 3 episodes. Now why do you but think you're gonna hate because him? I felt that way about every doctor. Like um Eccleston came on in like the first few episodes I'm like, "Oh, this is weird. He kind of sucks." And then he grew on me. And then I loved Eccleston. Yeah. And then he left and Tennant came in. I'm like, "Wow, he's really kind of hot, but he sucks. I don't like him. I want Eccleston back. But, you know, by the time he was gone, loved him. Same thing with Matt Smith. It's 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 like a cycle I go through. Yeah. And I think a lot of other people go through that, too. But Do you think that you, get, you get used to it? the fan base for Doctor Who? And, I mean, like, let's – here, follow this, this logic. Young, attractive men playing the Doctor brings a certain element of fandom to the show. If you make the doctor a not a young, attractive man, is a certain element of the show for a part of that fan base gone? You know, I, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I think it would have been um, more of a risk, like, if, if we haven't talked about this on air, but, like, if they were to cast a woman or not a white guy. Yeah. Like, I think that would have been more of a risk to their fan base than this would have been. Um because I, I, people in Britain are racist. Is uh, that what you're saying? And misogynistic? Dr. Bird said it. Dr. Bird said it? Yeah. Did you say it, Dr. Bird? Um, I think that would have been more of a risk. I don't think that this will hurt them. It'll just be different like anything else. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to fix this arm thing. Yeah, we're having, we're having uh, no, it, it's fine. failures just, here. Just go. Just keep talking. Okay. Phil. I'm filling. You're, you're, now you're, you're yelling at me. Phil. <sighs> so, <laughs> Blundermurf says, I don't think it'll hurt too much. Only very shallow fans will hate him just because he's older. I think that, that that's the case. I mean, if anything, I, I got to wonder what the BBC's demographics are. Um, you know, it, it, is it a bunch of young kids that are watching it? I mean, because then maybe... An older guy will will hurt it, but yeah, I really, I really. I mean, listen, it's it's undeniable that that there is a young female fan base for Doctor Who. I mean, listen, like go on to Tumblr. It's not a bunch of dudes with neck beards that are posting about posting gifts about the Doctor. You know, it, it's girls from ages fourteen to twenty five. That there is a huge demographic that loves this show, and I'm not saying that it's only because Matt Smith is is a cutie pie. Or David Tennant is somebody that you would like to bring home to mother. I'm saying that it's just a factor. And maybe 
Peter Capaldi can make the seamless transition for those people from uh, teen heartthrob to daddy issues. Uh, but it is not for sure. And, and you know, uh, creatively, I think that's that's following the story that you want to tell more so than who might be interested. And that's always the strongest creative position to be in. But it is just something to think about. Yeah, uh, Mr. Secretary says, so as long as the writing is compelling, I'm sure that it will be thin. I assume that's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the big thing is there for me with like the writing is Moffat changing up the story. <laughs> and and by that, well, it's been a, he's had a lot of the touchy feels. Yes. And that I think kind of comes from the fact that Matt Smith is so childlike and goofy, you know, Uh Peter Capaldi is not childlike and goofy. No. And, and he was, Moffat was very, very um, keen to say that, you know, to, to describe the new doctor in three words, it was not like Matt. So hopefully <laughs> the storylines are not the same that we would get for the Matt Smith doctor. I have one final thought about the special. Did it seem like Matt Smith was kind of like, not excited to leave the show, like was kind of almost like upset to be doing those interviews. Like yeah. he, he, was, he was a lot of not making eye contact and a lot of like, just, uh, I don't know. He seemed like a dude that was like, listen, contractually, you have to do this. You have to go and get in front of the camera and answer these questions. Yeah. He did seem really upset and almost, I don't want to say sobby, but like he looked kind of glazed and angry. I mean, like that. I mean, that, I don't. It was I, weird. I see where you're coming it was from. really yeah. weird. Uh, but it, it did seem. I don't I mean like it. Just makes me think that like maybe this wasn't totally Matt Smith's choice. Like I kind of feel like David Tennant at, at the time where he left, it was like, all right, I can talk to these people in Hollywood. We have these pilot ideas. I want to be the new Hugh Laurie. I feel like I can do it. It seemed like a safer bet for David Tennant than it does for Matt Smith. Uh, cause it's like, who'd be shocked? I mean, it's not like Matt Smith has been around in a lot of other stuff. You know, he was an unknown before he got Dr. Who. I think he's got a promising career, but it's not like he's like been, not like he's Benedict Cumberbatch. Who's like booking all sorts of stuff around Sherlock. Like, yeah. well, who knows? Who knows? I I like Matt Smith's doctor a lot, but I'm getting kind of bored with him. Getting a little bored. So then why are you going to be upset that Capaldi's there? Why are you going to hate Capaldi? No, I'm just saying he'll probably come in and I'm not going to like it. Because this is what's happened with every damn doctor for yeah. me. Like, I'm I just not too, not, not too cray, as the kids yes. are saying about him. And then throws on me, so. Uh, TNT Oaks says Smith is working on a movie right now. That's why he buzzed the hair. I mean, sure. Like, I don't doubt that he will get work but I don't know if he's in the same position that that tenant was who knows I don't know I guess I have this conspiracy theory that like the BBC came to him and said hey listen we got we want to go into a different direction creatively we think this is where we need to take the show we've gone about as far as we're going to go with you so okay, thanks, sayonara fine. and you can't fire somebody you know so it's like alright well how about you just take a graceful exit well, and, and when he started to do the season with uh, uh, Jenna, he kind of came into that season as playing, I don't want to say a darker character, because he's really not a dark character, but kind of yeah. estranged. Yeah. And maybe, maybe he just couldn't be that way good enough. And so they call in Capaldi. Capaldi. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't uh, know. Somebody thank you in the chat room uh, for... Uh, pointing out that in the loop, the uh, the movie adaptation of the thick of it is playing on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch that tonight and get a very foul mouthed version of who will eventually be the next Doctor. And they don't sponsor us. Amazon Prime does not sponsor us. No. Nope. Uh, and there we go. I think uh, is that is that good enough for uh, for for a special edition? I, Who's the boss? I hope so. I I, I'm really looking forward to the first episode he's in, so... Christmas. Christmas. So they say. So they say. So they say. All right. So say we all. All right. Well, I'm Ashley Paramore. I'm Justin Robert Young. Uh, woo-wee-woo. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Who? All right. This fucking arm. You want to move the thing back in? It'll be really close. You can look at the ruin them. Or the bird. Are we still live? Yeah. Woohoo. So let's see. Tom Baker, thick on Hulu. Baker bobblehead. Jerry, if it is at all possible, could you please get the Aquabats for summer music series? Uh, yeah. I mean, does somebody know the Aquabats? Like, everybody understands that the summer music series is booked by fans. Fans put us in touch with the music acts. We talk to the music acts from there. So if you want the Aquabats in the series, then life's a choose your own adventure, buddy. Hit them <laughs> up. Yay. Oh, well, that was easy. How long was the recording? 30 minutes? Yeah, 27 yeah, minutes and fine. 6 seconds. That's long enough, I guess. <laughs> Runem caused the casting of the new doctor. <laughs> uh... So by and large, I mean, like, where where are people on it? Should we do a straw poll? Let's do a straw poll. Should have yeah. done this during the show. Doctor. Doctor Bird. You're a bird. Bird, bird, bird. Doctor, you're drunk. Don't drink that. Please stand by. Dr. Bird needs a companion. I'm working on that. Oh, God damn, is she? We're trying. I'm trying to adopt a companion for him. All right. So I got uh, the new doctor is a great choice as one option. Won't be as good as Matt Smith as another option. Should curse like he did on that other show Dr. Bird's a male he's, <laughs> he's a cool dude birds are cool Chimera says don't do the curse option Oh, everyone will take that alright then we'll just do two of them it's a great choice won't be as good as Matt Smith creating the poll Bird, 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 bird is the word. Bird, bird, bird. He already said his doctor wouldn't curse like the other characters. That's true. No, yeah. I mean, that's a joke, obviously. Yes. Because the BBC would never allow that. No. You know what? I mean, and yeah. There we go. Will this one use a gun? Bum, bum, bum. No, I mean, I don't think they're going to change the canon. Of the character for Capaldi. I mean, let me ask you this question, and this might be something for, for more old school who canon, but like, is he the most established television, like, like you know, presence to take the role? Where the other, uh, I mean, I guess maybe in, in older who there were other character actors that took the role, like it would be not all that uncommon, but it's uncommon in this version because they've all pretty much been unknowns right yeah I mean insofar as I know yeah this has probably been the biggest for them Hartnell had a TV presence on a scale of 1 to 10 how excited are you I am. My hope is renewed. I'll put it that way. Like I would say a seven or an eight. Like my my hope is renewed that this will give kind of a, a shot in the arm for Moffat to be like, okay, let's break the mold a little. Like because all these scripts were getting a little stale. Yeah, I'm at. I'm a little lower. Like I'm probably at a five or a six. Um. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to have new blood. 
but I felt really neutral about the whole thing. Yeah. Like, because it, until I see him act and, like, actually take it on. We should watch uh, In the Loop. Okay. He curses a lot. It's, he's extraordinarily funny in that role. Like, he's, like, really aggressive and evil and cursy. Maybe once I finish Orange is the New Black. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I was neutral mostly because the surprise was ruined by those bets and rumors. You know, I, I'll tell you what, I do think the entire thing was way overhyped. Like, the way that they did it. Well, I mean, that's I'm, I'm hard. Ab- I mean, like, listen, they only went a half hour. They could have gone an hour. Like, there's the BBC, I think, would have taken an hour of completely filler Doctor Who content. And they could have run 14 more montages of like, and now we'll see who the new Doctor will be taking on as we do a full minute montage about Daleks. You know, it could have been that. It wasn't that. It was filler. But to be honest, I thought it was going to be more of just Moffat. I just wanted more Moffat talking about it. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Well, glad you won $50. TNT Oak said that somebody I work with swore Idris Elba would be the next doctor. Idris Elba would be a good doctor. I just don't think he's... That's a dude with a Hollywood career. I don't think he's coming back to uh, to do Doctor Who. What's he doing? He's being a bird. He's shoving his head into my fist. Anyway. Let's see. What about... Well, I guess we really can't talk all that much about John Hurt. I'm just ready to start the series again. Do you remember when it starts? Uh, the 50th anniversary. Does it just start back up at the Christmas special? Or are there a few episodes? No, it's, it's only it's the 50th anniversary and then uh, the Christmas special. Okay. There's no season in between here. Hmm. You think you got it fixed? Yeah. He's so angry, Doctor. He doesn't doodle, doodle, he doesn't like doodle, Peter doodle, Capaldi doodle. because he wanted to get cast. He did. He did. Uh let's see. Doctor Who fiftieth anniversary. Oh, John Hurt isn't gonna be the next doctor because he's the evil doctor between eight and nine, I guess. Or so we're led to believe. Which I would think, since they put at the end of that episode, and John Hurt as the doctor, that he would actually be a doctor. Well, I mean, we, people have, have pointed out that the Veil Yard is, is like an element that we haven't seen in a while, and that could be something, so. Yeah. All right, let's see. When? Oh. The impression was that John Hurt was the Time War doctor. doing hurt thing goes back to classic who so it will that will air on november 23rd did you set up the straw poll yeah what is it at i put it in the chat room i can put it everyone seems to like it for the most part out of our very scientific poll of 13 people. <laughs> hey, man. I'll tell you what. Is ever hanging out? I'm glad you're hanging out. Doctor. What? <sighs> Here we go. All right. Well, uh, anything else you want to talk about? If you want to just have... Sleep. Para para gerbs, wine ruin them chat. We can we can for a little bit. People want to stick around. A little chat, little chat. I know that we have everything all set up. Don't you have to like drink in the morning or fly in the morning? I don't have to fly, fly and drink. No, I just got to get up at six. And considering that it's like eight thirty, I think I'm gonna be okay. Okay. So Dragon Con. Yeah. We have a hotel room. We do. Finally. I got my schedule. Okay. Uh, I told you about this. But I'm on Rebecca Watson's science quiz. Yes. Apparently Tom is too. I talked to Tom. 
think Tom's on that one. I don't know whether Brian is on. Um, and NSFW is on Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Okay. NSFW is in the same normal, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, we're going to be doing a live FSL tonight. And we will be doing a uh, a live night attack, another live night attack. Okay. Which reminds me, I really, 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 really should get my edit notes into Brant for night attack. Isn't he in the chat room? Is Gadawag in the in the chat room? He was earlier. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I gotta listen to it. Um, Well, I have, yeah, there we go. So I got I, I basically have just been traveling and I, I've listened to the raw track a couple times and I've got a vague idea of where I want just the general segments to go, but I want to do a few nips and tucks uh, to some of the content just to keep it moving a little faster. Um, but hopefully I'll have that to him this week so we can actually edit it and then we can submit it and we can get it out on time when we want to. Um, what other fun stuff? So, Dragon Con, uh, we're going to be in costume, and you're going to get your costume done in time. I am going to get my costume done in time. Who Hefner? Wait, you're t- telling people? I think so. Didn't we already? I didn't. Oh, then never mind. Forget I said that. Sometimes I forget. Listen, I talk a lot, man. Like, it's hard to remember what I... I, I nearly spilled the beans on the, on the big NSFW music guest last night. I know. And I did. And you didn't. I did so I'm checking in for my flight tomorrow, which is not. Uh, oh, he already told you guys. Okay, well. All right, who Hefner? That's what it is. I said it somewhere, yeah. And I will be one of the bunnies. You will. Or bunny. I don't know that you'll have bunnies. I think we'll, we'll, we'll uh, we might find others. God damn it. I didn't get TSA pre again. You are such a travel snob. I got DSA Pre coming from Denver. Dude, what the fuck, man? This is garbage. You fly too much. You must be a terrorist. Fuck life. Uh, have you guys thought about combining the audio you record from DC with the Nertacular recording? No, we're going to release the Nertacular recording as its own thing. What we will do with the DC content, it will get out there. Nothing that we record. We are like American Indians when it comes to our comedy. Um, we are. Uh, we will. You. We will use all of it at some point. Um, Jackie Aaron wants us to do the the orange is the new black cosplay. Oh my gosh! I do not want you to have porn stash stash. Come on, just for one day. Oh my god! And all you have to—you didn't have to wear makeup. You just—you—you you just walk around in the in the orange uh, jumpsuit. In, in but the it DOC says the go orange. game on the back. No, not my orange jumpsuit. A the orange prison suit. Um. You don't have to squeeze yourself into any costume. No makeup. I've got like. I will costumes. have to do more prep. Then you will for the costume. I'll consider it if you finish your Who Hefner costume. All right. Because I already have two. And I, I don't look like her. You look enough. Skinny girl with blonde hair, you can pass. Ugh. I mean, I don't look like homeboy. I would actually have to get a haircut to look like him. No. You know me to get the high and tight? Nope. Why not? No. All right. The facial hair will be bad enough. I want you to keep your beard. The beard's going to have to go if I'm doing Hugh Hefner. Does it? Yeah. Hugh Hefner didn't have a beard. Ugh. And I'm going to get a bubble pipe, I decided. I'm going to have my... Uh, I'm going to have the, the sonic screwdriver and, uh, and, and the bubble pipe. Is this one... Which one goes? The one that's heavier. Where's the button? It's. Yeah. So I'm going to like. I'm going to have the. uh, The bubble pipe. And I'll just like. I'm going to like have the bubbles come out. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
Are you still gonna do like the the three glasses too? Instead oh. of sunglasses. Oh. Yeah. Or should I get a fez? I've got a fez. Should I? You could do both. Is that the fez that got you at Epcot? Yeah. Nice. Um, anyway, that's going to be probably my favorite costume for the weekend. The Who Hefner get up. People are really into this orange is the new black thing. Well, I feel like we could be we could be like like a, a hit of, hit of the con, man. People are going to be into it. Everybody loves the shit at the con where it's like that shit just happened, right? That's always the people that like get get noticed and mentioned, and and people are like pulling over to take pictures, right? Like either something really elaborate and amazing, or like some shit that just happened. I'll think about it. You're not getting your hair cut like that, though. Why not? I have to actually it'll like. I'd look have to like shit, and then you won't have, be able I'd to I'd do I'd the have, other I'd have to costumes. Spray, spray it black too. So I don't have the gray streaks because that would be a, a dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. I mean, I guess I could probably get away with just gelling it kind of down, right? If I gelled it down and just um, combed it back, I think that would work. <laughs> um, See, now Jackie agrees with me. Chimera96 so. is going to go as Fat Jane way. <laughs> Make it oh, so. Oh, man. How many of you guys are going to be at Dragon Con now? Germ24 goes Mr. Fantastic. Uh, I I actually, I was going to go as Mr. Fantastic, and a couple things got in the way, because I was thinking that that would be another great couple's costume, is she could go as uh, Sue Storm, I could go as Reed Richards. But those are costumes you kind of have to get. And to be honest with you, I just kind of got fat, and like I don't want to be in a skin-tight costume when I'm like I got a belly. There's, there's nothing more depressing than a fat superhero at Dragon Con, like, and I, and I love it. I love everybody, but I got I got a tummy on me right now, and I can't do it. We if still I got have to in run shape, tonight. If I got in shape, I could do it. We still have to run tonight. If you want to do it, I was expecting you to flake out. No, after we finish this glass, let's do All it. Right, yeah. Um, We're gonna get rid of that tummy so you can wear skin tight yeah. superhero suit. Um. So there we go. Hey, a lot of people who are watching uh, right now are going. I'm, I'm pumped about that. I'm so excited about Dragon Con. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Especially now that we're not hunting for a hotel room anymore, and I cannot stress out and work on my costume. You are you are the one. Yep. Who did Two it? years in a row now. Yep. Who's responsible? This girl. This mic is kind of hard to drink around. We don't like toast around, right? Yeah. <laughs> Code Monkey X says, "Isn't Mister Fantastic rubber? Just say you wanted a gut, so that's the form you took." I don't think that plays. <laughs> I don't think that plays. I'll tell you what, I don't think so. That is a cop out. Hey, Landy. The thing is, like, is it will work, man? Like, all I really need to do is just get in like non gut shape, like, and I can do it because not like Mister Fantastic's a muscly dude. Like, he's a he's a stringy dude. So, you are going to do who, Hefner? Are you going to yeah. do another one aside from the potential porn stash? Um, I was thinking about J. Jonah Jameson. J. Jonah Jameson would be an easy one for me. Um, I've done it as like a costume before. All I need is a, uh, uh, you know, I just need a suit and some suspenders. And then... I'll tell you, before I actually had to highlight, I had to like baby powder highlight my gray temples. I don't think I'm going to need to do that this time. <laughs> this time I can just rock au natural. But that's another mustache. What about doing uh, 10 again? Or 11? I don't want to repeat. Why not? That's I easy. See. That's easy. Well, because I was thinking, so I've got the... Uh... So this would be... J. Jonah... And that was J. Jonah on Fort Lauderdale, in downtown Fort Lauderdale, um, as J. Jonah Jameson. And, uh, like, I was surprised at how many people recognized me. But I think I could pull off a pretty good uh, J. Jonah Jameson now, and especially for Dragon Con. I would really just need, like, the key would just be having a, um, a what's it called? Oh, my 
God. I can't believe I'm blanking on. So I am going to do the snowman villain from Doctor Who. The Daily Bugle. That's what I was looking for. Go ahead. I'm going to do the snowman from Doctor Who. Sexy. Yeah. Because you're it's be pretty good. Because you all you want is attention from all the guys, so you're doing. Yep. The, <laughs> you caught me. You're doing the snowman from Doctor Who. Me. Uh, I'll have what, to... what got you all hyped up into that? Um, because it'd be an easy costume and it would be recognizable to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and Patrick showed me a picture of somebody that had done it. I was like, "That's fucking genius." I'm gonna copy that. Yeah. So I have everything I need right now to make that. <laughs> And he said, because uh, I think it was Gallifrey 1 he went to. Yeah. Um, someone that was dressed up as the snowman. Every time someone sunk the snowman, it would melt into a pile. Oh, So I can just awesome. melt into a pile. It's much easier than standing still while people take your picture like in the Hilton for, for the, three uh, hours. Yeah. When you were the angel last year. That was fun, though. You were schvitzing like a fucking hooker in church, though. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, man. Yeah, that was that was a hard one, but it was fun. Hmm, that seemed tight. Um, I think it was Forge, Roger Delgado, Master from Doctor Who. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I kind of feel like I could do a double up in one day. I could do Jay Jonah in the morning and and maybe porn stash at night. I can make you a grumpy cat costume. A grumpy cat costume. Yeah. What would the grumpy cat? I costume saw a entail? really silly one. Where it's a hood and it has ears and then you do the makeup on the face and it looks like Grumpy Cat. See, like, I, I don't know if I want to do, like, all cosplay. Like, I feel like if I just have one or two good cosplays, that'll be good. Because by and large, I like to just sort of walk around in sandals and drink beer all day. That's kind of like, it's kind of like my move for Dragon Con. Yeah. I like getting drunk playing dress up, though. I know you do. Like it was life. really hard. That's not even just a dragon con thing here, folks. That's a life thing. <laughs> Jerry, um, you could do the regeneration of Peter Capaldi with the eleventh costume and some talc in there. Man, I'll tell you what. All of a sudden, how pumped are older cosplayers than Peter Capaldi? Oh yeah, dude! Whole new world. A whole new world. I can now be the doctor. Oh my god! Uh, they're yeah, no, they are pumped. They are psyched that now all these pretty looking boys are are out of the running for uh, solid Doctor cosplay. Uh, speaking of which, um, your friend your of mine, old as fuck. <laughs> your oldest fuck, uh, yeah. your friend of mine, Bill Ron. Mm-hmm. Um, does he not make a really fucking good Tony Stark? Oh, he's amazing. He's great. Like, uh, no, he's. I mean, like the look. Yeah, even no. I mean, Bill Duran is operating at a cosplay level for which many cannot even really fully comprehend. Science has not really determined how high a level he's working at. He's fucking awesome at everything. He has just, he's one of those attention to detail motherfuckers. Yeah, he's good. I wish I was spending more time in Seattle. I would have run into him. But uh, I'm like in and out, like on like a three man crew. So I don't have like a whole lot of time to fuck around. Yeah. Um, how about all the old Star Wars characters that'll be in episode 7 we know a lot of old cast will be in the new films that'll open it up for older people tell you what great he, TVC gone hit it on the head man this is a great era for older cosplayers we are uh, we are rocking and rolling uh, bah, 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 bah. any New England Go games coming up no not that I am booked on uh you know, we have a contractor in New York that sops up a lot of the local games uh, in the Northeast. Um, I am going, I might as well get a fucking apartment in Ohio uh, because I'm going to be back and forth to there. I got Columbus coming up in two weeks. And then uh, I have Cleveland in late September. Um and then I got San Diego after Dragon Con. I have, yeah, all sorts of stuff. That'll be fun. I've uh, got this apartment. You've got this apartment. Hey, there was a time when you were the one traveling in this relationship. And I had my apartment or slash house in Florida. 
Florida. Florida. Florida. Yeah. I miss travel a lot, though. What's the biggest thing you miss about travel? Just, I mean, at this point, I've got friends in every damn city. Yeah. So it's... Seeing people is great. Yeah. I, that, I mean, that's the biggest element of it. Just being able to touch base with people in local Like me going to see and, Ibbitt last night. Yeah. It's just an amazing, completely out of left field, awesome experience. And doing the big Coverville episode was yeah. really fun. So just stuff like that. Being able to touch base. By the way, I did friends. a Coverville episode last night. So I'll let Plug. you guys know when that's out. I really liked it, though. I had I was very proud of one of the the big missed opportunities of Freddie Mercury. Um, was that like as a consummate gay icon, he you know could have I I would have hoped that he really would have embraced the sports legend status that at least two of his songs have, and uh, also pointing out that if you picture a Jets fan singing we will rock you and a leather daddy there really is no difference you can see the same dude just in a leather daddy outfit or a mark sanchez jersey uh singing we will rock you and it's the same thing let's see oh the little r2d2 and that link that's adorable um we tvc gone tv you're in Phoenix, right? Was that at your house? Am I thinking correctly? I think I am. Sometimes I get a little bit of Ronum in me and I get a little lost. Yeah, there we go. TV Seagun's kids are adorable. And they're all in the cosplay. Um, and, and his wife is awesome. TV Seagun rules the school. Oh, well, right. We should probably wrap it up. Yeah, I know. So you can make excuses on how you're not going to run. You know, fuck you. We're going to run. Just waiting. Wait until we turn off the camera. I'm tired, Jury. I mean... I just want to... We can just, run tomorrow. I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. Okay, can we wake can up Can we do three, four? two, one? Can we explain three, two, one, sleep? Oh, my God. <laughs> so... Okay, okay. Well, no. Let's just talk, and then you can... All right. Well, I mean, there's a so, setup for it. So, uh, I obviously cover magic. Ashley is uh, somebody who has uh, been in, interested in magic and been around uh, magic as somebody who's like learned magic tricks. Um, we kind of at some point became fascinated with mentalists and the convention for a mentalist act where it's like instant hypnosis. So like Keith Barry, Darren Brown, uh, a lot of these guys, especially on television, will just do one of these like, uh, you know, like, oh, like, and you're out, and you're out. Um, and so we just kind of boiled it down. You should really make a bit on this side we, of the, we, NSFW. We boiled it down to three, two, one, slee, 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 slee. Uh, and just eliminating the P in sleep and just going three, two, one, slee. <laughs> and so now whenever one of us is annoying the other one, <laughs> we'll just go like, uh-huh, uh-huh, That's three, good. two, one, That's slee, slee, slee. slee. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, which is fun. We're we- really weird. Um, uh, do we know when the podcast track for Dare Dragon Con will be out, or should I really aim to be there Friday through Monday? Be aimed to be there Friday through Sunday in terms of programming. So, like, don't look to fly out Sunday night. Sunday night is a bad time to fly out because that's, again, when we'll have a lot of, you know, all the all diamond club will be in a refractory period after just a big diamond club jizz factory. Uh, that is the dragon con show. So you're going to want to hang out uh, after that. Um, I really, the only thing I also want to figure out is I would love to do like a bar night. Like remember remember that bar with the with the karaoke thing, the one that's open all night? We went there like twice last year. Was I drunk when we got there? And no, I mean were we at Dragon I mean... Con? <laughs> yes, we were drunk. Uh you don't remember that place? No, I don't. It has like all night karaoke. I would because I would like to do the 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 party last time was so much fun. The Diamond Club party was so fun that like I would like to do something like that. And I think um, I would um, 
I would love to do maybe maybe like the solid thing to do is just like let's just throw a bunch of money at a bar tab, which was kind of the original idea for the Diamond Club party, was just to throw a bunch of money at a bar tab and just give all a Diamond Club, you know, uh, a secret password that they can get like some free drinks on, and then we can all just hang out. Um, but I would also like to get, have somewhere where we can like have ruin them. But I don't know like where that's gonna be feasible. Like if we can like sell it to a bar somewhere so they can pour it, you know? Yeah, bars are gonna be weird about that. But I mean, it's just like any other liquor, right? No, because they want you buying their alcohol. Yeah, but we're gonna sell them their alcohol, then they'll sell it at a markup. Like if we sell them this bottle at X, right? They're not going to sell it at... I would try and prearrange that with the bar because they can be a pain in the ass. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, no, that's my point, is that we sell it to the bar. Like, we don't bring it in. I said uh, in advance. Yes, in advance. That's what I'm saying. We got three weeks. before... Okay. Come on, man. That's a million years. Uh Uh-huh. That gets into Georgia law, and it's so much tape. Um... I wonder if we could sell it to like a liquor store in uh, in Atlanta, though, and maybe at least people could just go buy it at that liquor store. Because otherwise, I mean, like we're not we're not going to be able to. I mean, we could just bring a case, but then it's just us pouring it out for free, you know. But I would like it. I mean, it would be a fun thing for a liquor store, an enterprising liquor store. In Atlanta, if they wanted to make some money, what they would do is talk to us and get, you know, a 10, 15 cases of this and then just sell the crap out of it. You might want to talk to your wino people because they might be able to handle that for you if you tell them, if you get in contact with the liquor store. Yeah, I should just talk to Steve on that. By the way, Steve made ruin them gummy bears. What? Yeah. Are they good? I mean, they're ruining gummy bears. Of course they're fucking good. Now people are screaming. I thought that was a cat dying. Yeah, may may, may very well be. All right, uh, this brings us to the end of uh, Jury and Paramore Drink Wine. Uh, by the way, here, real quick ending note. Brian Ibbett is like, so Paramore, real last name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, seriously. It's a real did I story. did I ever tell you that I used to go by a pseudonym when I first started doing stuff online? Really? I What'd used my with? German exchange student's last name. So I was going by Ashley Schulte. And I put it on business cards um, when I first started Why getting involved. Why would you not want to have an awesome last name and instead go with a shitty last because name? Because I was worried about crazy people on the internet. Like thinking what? I don't know. This was like eight Nine years ago? Give me a break. Because people have only gotten crazier on the internet in the last eight years. Yeah, well, uh, actually the <laughs> Ashley only... Danger, they're saying. <laughs> Sister to Carlos. No, the only reason that I even put my real last name on was when I ran for the board of SSA. Yeah. And so I got my fans. I'm like, hey, I'm running for this board. Vote for me. Yeah. Hey, this is me. And, uh, yeah. No, we know you're not Jackie Hearn, Jackie Hearn. We know that Jackie Hearn's a... A nom de plume. Uh, Code Monkey. Wait, that's not your real name? God damn it. What can I believe in? Uh, All right, everybody. We're going to wrap it all up. Wrap it on up. Uh, I love you guys. Wrapping up, wrapping up. Burn. my mama taught me good. I'm wrapping the hell out of there. And I'm like, oh my God.